Probably one of the top three useful skills in all of maths is to be able to accurately multiply. Comes up all the time in life and of course in the GMAT and GRE. Now yes, for the GRE and most times in life you will have a calculator, but nevertheless, how awesome would it be to be confident in being able to multiply things? Of course, for GMAT students, you need to do it without a calculator, but even for those GRE students or students studying other exams, to have the confidence to be able to do it yourself, not necessarily with a calculator, can yes, make you sometimes quicker at doing it than a calculator, but even in general, what about those times you want to do it in your head? And what about those times where you're away from your phone, for example? Of course, because of phones, this skill is getting rarer and rarer, but that's going to make you stand out even more in your business or your place of employment. You're the one who can actually do it without relying on your phone. Now, the second part of the title is accurate multiplication, because I know everyone has their own method, and I know about three or four different methods, and I used to have a different way of doing multiplication, but this way is honestly the best way. So let me show you how to do it. The only thing you need with this method to be perfect at multiplication is a knowledge of the times tables and how to add up a column of numbers. So let me show you this amazing secret that many students after they learn it say to me has changed the way they do maths. Okay, 17 times 38, you can see on your screen. What you do is you break down each number into its hundreds, tens, and units separately. So we draw a box out, usually in noughts and crosses, however many columns and rows as you need, and we separate off the tens and units, in this case, of 17 and 38. So instead of writing 17 in one of the rows, we write a 10, and then separately, a seven. Instead of writing 38, we write a 30, and then an eight. And now we're going to multiply, and you're thinking, well, is this really saving any time? Well, yes, because we're only going to multiply the first digit of each number. We're not going to do 30 times 10, even though we could work it out, even though you'd find it easy to work it out. You'll see that it's actually better just to do the first digit times the first digit, and then add up the zeros after. Because when we get on to three digit multiplication, which we'll do in the next example, it's so much quicker if you just do the first digit times the first digit. What do I mean? Well, for 30 times 10, we just do three times one. Three times one is three, and there are two extra zeros. One from the 30, one from the 10. So we get 300. That's a three at the front with the two extra zeros. Now watch me do the same thing, but slightly sped up. Seven times three is 21, one extra zero. Eight times one is eight, one extra zero. Eight times seven, 56, no extra zeros. So you see, by just focusing on the first digit, of each number, we can speed up the calculations rapidly. We don't have to think what's 30 times seven. Why give our brains that stress? Just do three times seven and then add the zeros later. Now, some of you will still not be convinced, but when we get onto the harder calculations, I think I can convince you. Anyway, what do we do now once we've done all those multiplications? We do a nice, neat column containing those numbers, 300, 210, 80, and 56. And now all it is is simple addition. We've turned a really hard multiplication into a simple addition. How do we add those numbers? And it's really important you do it neatly. You look at the units. Look at the units digit column. Zero plus zero plus zero plus six is six. Look at the tens digit column. Zero plus one plus eight plus five, or that'd be 14. So we put a four down below and we carry a one. Because it was 14, we carry a one onto the next column. So we draw a little one on the next column. One plus three plus two is six. So the answer becomes 646. Now this is where this method becomes better than a lot of the other methods. With the other method that many of you might use, you have to carry lots of zeros and each row has a, an extra number of zeros and many students make mistakes with that method. I used to a lot. Therefore, this method is a lot quicker and a lot cleaner. But for those students still not convinced, let me show you an even harder multiplication for which this method becomes even more superior. We're gonna do 234 times 56, except this time I'm gonna go at the realistic pace that I would go at to show you how it works. Okay, we draw out the table with a separate 
row for 50 and 6 and separate columns for 200, 30 and 4. We split it up like that. Now here's how it goes. Just the front digits, remember. 2 times 5 is 10, 3 extra zeros. 3 times 5 is 15, 2 extra zeros. 4 times 5 is 20, 1 extra zero. 2 times 6 is 12 with 2 extra zeros. 6 times 3 is 18, 1 extra zero. 6 times 4 is 24. See how quick it is when you just focus on the first digit. There wasn't 50 times 4 or 6 times 30 or even 200 times 50. Imagine doing 200 times 50 in your head. A lot of people would struggle with that. I just did 2 times 5 and then counted the extra zeros. Notice it's important it's just the extra zeros you're counting. 2 times 5 is 10. You write down the number 10, then you count the zeros, 3 extra zeros. You don't do 2 times 5 is 10, don't write anything down, and then say, oh, it's got 3 zeros at the end, so it's 1,000. No, then you're going to get confused. Just do 2 times 5 is 10, write down the number 10, and then after you've written down 10, then count up the extra zeros. Same thing with 30 times 50. Do 3 times 5 is 15, write down 15, and then just count the zeros. And that way you'll never make a mistake. So see how quick that was for this really hard multiplication. All we have to do now is, as I've said at the bottom, write down nice, neat columns. So here's a nice, neat column. Everything's ordered very correctly. Adding up the units adds up to four. Tens add up to 10. So we put zero, carry the one. One plus five plus two plus two plus one is 11, I think. So we put a one, carry the one. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, and 1 equals 1, of course. So it's 13,104. And all we needed to get that was a knowledge of our times tables and basic addition. And honestly, I would say only about 5% of adults could quickly and accurately multiply that number out. And yes, as I said, it's a rarer skill because of calculators and mobile phones, but you want to be that rare individual who can do it without their phone. Finally, let's do a decimal multiplication. That's how good this method is. It even works if there's decimals involved. So this should surely convince you if all the other examples didn't. What happens if we have this calculation? Very realistic, right? $1.70 is what something costs and we're gonna buy 67 of them. Say we're doing a bulk order for an inventory and our phone's on charge. We don't have a phone available. Instead of going into the next room and asking someone for their phone, or logging onto the computer so we can use a desktop app, we're just gonna do it ourselves. How do we handle these numbers when there are decimal places? Step one, and the most important step, is you ignore the decimal point. Just treat the numbers as they would be if there wasn't a decimal point there. What would the two numbers be if there weren't any decimal points? 170 and 67. So the calculation would be 170 times 67 if we ignore the decimal point and that's the calculation we're going to do 170 split up as 170 and 67 split up as 60 and 7 showing off our method 1 times 6 is 6 with 3 extra zeros 6 times 7 is 42 with 2 extra zeros 7 times 1 is 7 with 2 extra zeros 7 times 7 is 49 with 1 extra zero what do we do then we add them up in a nice neat column it doesn't matter the order, by the way, in which you write these numbers. Adding these up, the units digit is zero, and then we've got a nine, and then that would be 13. So we put a three, carry the one, and 10 plus one is 11. So it's 11, three, nine, zero. Finally, what about the decimal point? Remember at the beginning, we pretended the decimal point wasn't there? Well, now it's time to bring in the decimal point. As I've written down below, you count how many numbers are after the decimal places in total. Now with the number 67, there were no numbers after the decimal point. There were no decimal points. But with $1.70, there were two numbers after the decimal point. So in total, between the two numbers, there are two numbers after the decimal point. And therefore, in our answer, there needs to be two numbers after the decimal point, meaning the decimal point would go after the three. 113.90, giving us two numbers after the decimal point. So our order would cost $113.90. And if I hadn't been explaining that, 
that would have only taken about 20 seconds of calculation. No need to go into the next room or log on to the computer. And we have our answer. And the people in the office are impressed at our maths and we get a promotion and we get rich and we become famous and take over the world. Maybe not all of that is guaranteed, but some of that could happen. Either way, that is how to do accurate multiplication with or without decimals. Try the method out for yourself, test your answers against a calculator, and let me know how they go.